All right. So welcome everybody to uh, lecture 34, quantum mechanics part one. Uh, today is Christmas Eve. So happy Christmas, Merry Christmas Eve to all of you who and well, if you don't want to be merry on Christmas, then that's your choice. Okay. Okay. So uh, lecture 34, so what have we been talking about? Right? So I talked about angular momentum. Now, before I begin this, uh, uh, continue going on, let me ask you all one question and please raise your hand. Uh, if if, if uh, the answer, you know, the answer is in the affirmative. Uh, at this stage, of the course, are you able to follow the notation uh, for the most part or not? If the answer is yes, please raise your hand. Okay. So <clears throat> those of you who are still having difficulties, okay, with following, uh, with being able to follow this notation. Uh, see, one, th one thing is that, well, you know, it helps if you attend class regularly and also it helps if you actually participate. Like some of you, I never ever see your videos turned on and uh, even when the class is over and I'm trying to, uh, you know, say uh, bye, goodbye to everybody, it is very difficult to get a response from some people. So um, anyways, the fact that uh, most of you, majority of you, seem to be comfortable. I think that is probably all I can hope for. Uh, so, uh, and again, if you do have any, uh, you can lower your hand, sir. If you do have any uh, doubts, okay? The remaining doubts, you please ask me, okay? Uh, see, only if you ask me, then I will uh, be able to answer you, right? Otherwise, like I have no way of knowing. Okay, so uh, Vikash, you can lower your hand, okay? Unless you have a question. Okay, so uh, today, whose videos did I request? Uh, I asked Amrish. Amrish, you don't want to keep your video turned on? Fine. Shubham, please uh, don't turn off your video, okay? Thanks. All right, so I'll continue with angular momentum. And um, so um, before I before I continue uh, with the with the quantum uh, aspect, let me remind you of a couple of aspects about the classical. Uh, object, right? Uh, so this is this is this is angular momentum. Now the thing is that if you did not have a good uh, for whatever reason uh, exposure to um, to classical mechanics previously, then you might even you know not be very comfortable with this. So. Uh, one of the questions, for instance, is that why is this an important quantity for any uh, mechanical system, classical or quantum mechanical, right? And the answer can be seen as follows, that if you take the time derivative, right, of this uh, expression, what do you get? You get, uh, you apply li the Leibniz rule and you get R dot cross P uh, plus R, cross dp by dt, right? 
now the first term the first term what is r dot r dot is just v right and cross p now v and p are both in the same direction right so the cross product will be zero and uh, what about uh, the remaining portion this one this is r cross dp by dt right and what is dp by dt we know that that is the external force on the system by newton second law right so if the external force is zero right then what this tells us is that dl by dt is zero which means that l is conserved right it means that if i have a if i have a system closed system which is not affected by external forces right and can have many subsystems many particles then those particles are interacting with each other right then um those particles can have different angular momenta right at one initial time right so if you are at a time t1 you can have some particle uh, which has some angular momentum l1 another particle which has some angular momentum l2 right and uh, they could they could be moving and interacting and then <clears throat> at some later time t2 right particle 1 could end up with some angular momentum l1 prime particle 2 could end up with some angular momentum l2 prime right but what this tells us is that that if the external force is zero then l1 plus l2 is equal to l1 prime plus l2 prime right so angular momentum total angular momentum is a conserved quantity and why are conserved quantities so important conserved quantities are important because uh they allow us to characterize the state of the system right so for instance how do you characterize the state of motion of a particle or any system you say what is its energy what it what is its linear momentum what is its total angular momentum and these are all conserved quantities right and um so it is this is important for the for the same reason in 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 quantum mechanics also right so now but in quantum mechanics what happens is that our operator this is r cross p right and this is minus i h bar and i'm just writing this as the vector r because uh, working in the position representation r hat uh, just becomes the vector r right and this is the gradient operator coming from the momentum so this object right so it's a three component object which we can write as lx ly and lz and if you did the exercise that i gave you uh, at the end of uh, the previous lecture which is to calculate these commutators what you will find is that these different components lx and ly they don't commute so we can write it like this li j li comma lj is equal to something times delta ij so delta ij tells us that if sorry not not <laughs> my mistake not something times delta ij something times epsilon ijk epsilon ijk okay uh so what is this what is this epsilon symbol i, I have explained this before to you i think have i have i not can somebody please remind me it's been about 34 lectures so i tend to forget explain sir ha huh? kya tha explain yes no yes sir yes, yes sir okay so just to remind you again this epsilon ijk is equal to plus 1 if ijk is a even permutation
of one, two, three, and or x, y, z, and minus one if i, j, k is an odd permutation, and zero otherwise. So that means if any of the any of these uh, i and j are equal, then this is zero, right? That makes sense because if you take the commutator of LX with LX, it's the same operator, you should get zero, right? So what is this commutator? We can do, we, we can do this calculation. It's, it's not very difficult. Let me just uh, do it uh, really quickly. So I'll get a factor of minus IH power from each one of these. So I'll get minus H bar square times, uh, so what is LX now? Remember LX is, LX is, is this object, right? LX is, is this object, which you can obtain uh, by taking the cross product, right? Using the standard determinant of a matrix. Now, so LX is Y do Z minus Z do Y, and LY is going to be Z do X minus X do Y. Okay. And so, what is the commutator of this? So you can just uh, multiply out both sides, right? A B minus B A. And what you will get is, so if you, if you look at this, for instance, uh, you'll get y dz minus z dy. So you'll get, let me, let, me, let me just write down a couple of sample terms, okay? So for instance, you will have a term like this. You'll have y dz x dz, something like this, right? And then, uh, you'll have another term uh, which will be of the form minus x dz y dz, right? So I'm taking the commutator of this first and this one, this second term, right? Now, if you look at this expression, uh, what will happen? This uh, dz, it will not act on x and it will not act on y. So you here you will get here you will get minus x y dz square and there will be a plus sign here and here you will get plus x y dz square and so this term will cancel out. So you will get more three uh, four more terms like this which will go to zero and then you will get terms of this form y dz times z dx. So this fellow, this fellow, right? And then the commutator of, uh, one second. Uh, dz. No, one second. Ye wala ये तो जीरो देगा एलेक्स क्या है हाँ सो यू लेट्स लुक एट द कॉम्पिटेटर ऑफ दिस टाइम है सो यू गेट माइनस जेड डो आई जेड डीएक्स एंड देन प्लस the same thing, z dx times z dy. And then other terms like this, okay? Well, actually, no, this will be the only term. All the other terms will be zero. And no, one second, this will also give us zero only. No, this will also be zero. My mistake, what am I doing? Person. 
uh, I should get So we'll get to x del y minus y del x, which is yeah, yeah, no, I know the answer. I'm just trying to uh, write down the non-zero term without going through the whole computation. I guess I'm being a little bit lazy, right? But let me just write down all the terms. Fine, uh, that is probably the fastest way. So let's see y dz uh, z dx minus z dx times y dz and this will give, ah, this is the term. Well, this term will, so if you work it all out, fine, I won't work it all out. It's a, I'll leave that for you. So the commutator of LX and LY, you will get H bar here. One factor of H bar will come out. The other factor will go in here and you'll get minus I H bar LZ. Is this right uh, minus i? Is that right? Please tell me if it's wrong. Uh, that is a positive sign. Is it positive sign? Positive. positive. Huh? Okay. So similarly, if you calculate the other commutators, you will get ly lz is equal to i h bar lx, right? And then lz lx. is equal to i h bar l y. So all of these three expressions can be written in this form. L i l j is equal to i h bar epsilon i j k l k. Where in the second term, there is a sum over k. Okay, k is a repeated index, so there is a sum over k. So when you sum over k, what you will get is, you will get exactly this. Because if you put i is equal to x, j is equal to y, the only non-zero term will be when k is equal to z. So these operators don't commute with each other. Since they don't commute with each other, this implies that lx, ly, and lz cannot have uh, simultaneous eigenvalues. Simultaneous meaning uh, I, they, cannot, they cannot have the same eigenstate. I should say it like this. The same eigenstate. So if you have an eigenstate, uh, which is a, which, a state which is an eigenstate of LZ, it will not be an eigenstate of LX or and LZ. Okay, so what, what we want to do, we want to characterize, uh, what we want is a complete set of commuting operators. Okay, because uh, the system that we are talking about now is a system which has some angular momentum. So for this system, what will be the complete set of commuting operators? Right, so LX, LY, and LZ, we can only have one of these. We pick, we pick LZ by convention. But then we can define another operator, uh, which can be written as follows. It's the dot product of this. So you get LX squared plus LY squared plus LZ squared. All right, you will get other terms also, but those terms will cancel out because of these commutation relations. So you should verify that. Right, because you will get, uh, when, when, you, when you multiply L by L, L with L, what will happen? You will get terms like uh, LX, LY, L, LX, LZ, actually no. That, no, that's not what we're doing. We're, no, no, we are just doing the dot product. So there's nothing to check. That's fine. Okay, so this is the total angular momentum squared. So the next is an exercise for you to check. 
which is that if you take the commutator of L square with any of the three components individually, that is that uh, is zero. This is very important and you have to check it. Okay. So now what we have is we have we have four operators L square, LX, LY, and LZ, right? And we there is no point in including L in this uh, scheme because well the comp we have already included the components of it, so there is no point in in keeping L you know as part of this picture. So if you want a complete set of commuting operators, we have to pick operators which commute with each other. So L square commutes with everything. So I'll pick L square. Then I have three remaining operators. Which operator should I pick? I'll take LZ. Now, once I've taken these two, that's it. I can't go any further. I can't, LX and LY have to be kept aside. So these two operators, this is my complete set of commuting operators. And the eigenvalues of this, of these operators, will characterize the states of the system. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing is to understand what are the eigenvalues and how can we how can we determine them? So there there is a again uh, a way to do that. So let's let's. Uh, so, because see, the thing is that if you want to find the eigenvalues in eigenstates, there are two ways to go about it. Eigenvalues and eigenstates. So, what do we mean by an eigenstate or an eigenstate? We mean that it is some state such that LZ acting on this state, right, should give us some number times the so I can convert this into, uh, I can write psi in the position representation. And if I write psi in the position representation, what will I get? I'll get minus i h bar, lz is x dy minus y dz, acting on psi of r is equal to some number times psi of r, right? So this expression becomes equivalent to this differential equation, right? So this is a differential equation, right? This is a differential equation for this function psi. And this differential equation looks uh, complicated, but there is a trick by which it can be simplified. And the trick is to go to polar coordinates. Okay or spherical coordinates. So we write R is equal to R theta phi. Now, when you do this, this expression that you have here, it becomes much simpler, okay? It turns out that L of Z can be written as minus I H bar and then d by d5, that's it, right? So how do you get this expression? You write x and y in terms of these coordinates, right? So what is what is x and y? x is equal to r cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi, and so on, right? But then you have to write the derivatives also in terms of the derivatives of with respect to r, theta, and phi. 
right so this is an exercise this is an exercise in algebra for you so r is equal to right these are the two coordinates we want to map one system of coordinates to another one okay so what is x is equal to r cosine theta cosine phi r cosine theta sine phi right and what about d by dx right how do you determine d by dx so let's just put a function here a dummy function f okay let's ask what is df by dx hello sir x is equal to r sin theta cos phi ah you're right fine you can take theta right okay happy <laughs> this is fine right there's no issues with this okay so now df by dx is and what is f f is a function of r theta phi okay and if i take the derivative of this function with respect to x how do i write down uh, what what is the calculus tell me that this can be written as in the following way right df by dr dr by dx and this is the chain rule but there are more than uh, it's a function of uh, many variables so you have to include a term for each variable right like this and this expression so i'll write this as d by dx acting on f and the expression on the right i will write in the following way dr by dx times d by dr d theta by dx d by d theta d phi by dx d by d phi okay and this whole thing acting on f right now you can remove f from this picture right f is just a fun dummy function and you get the expression for dx d and similarly you you can you can evaluate what is d by dy right because this tells you what d by dx is and as in terms of d by dr d by d theta d by d phi right and these derivatives you can take right so when you do all this when you do this algebra what you will find is that x dy minus y dx is equal to d by d phi okay and it is very very important that you should know how to derive this okay when i say it's very important that means that well it could be on one of your quizzes one on your quiz or your mid term okay so now we can look again at this eigen value function eigen value equation right and now this eigen value equation becomes minus i h bar d by d phi psi of r theta phi is equal to m times psi of r theta phi okay right now how how can i solve this equation well the no it's simple uh what is the solution of this well this is a function of r theta and phi 
so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the assumption that i can write down uh this whole thing as a as a product state uh like this okay that this is a this is a function only of r this is a function only of theta this is a function only of phi and what is this known as this is known as separation of variables right we have looked at this before right so if you insert this and this is an answer answer means this is an assumption okay this might not give you the most general solution to the problem you have to keep that in mind so if you substitute this expression in here what you will find is that this state uh capital phi is what it's just some there'll be some constant times e to the minus i uh m phi and uh the h bar will be this is that right yes i believe that 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 is right i have to make sure my units are correct h bar okay and yeah you can you can check the units and all wait no one second ऑपरेटर now what what does this represent physically right physically if you look at if you imagine what this represents so if we draw our coordinates again like this from x y and z okay and i want to i want to draw this function e to the i m phi right so it has two components right cosine and sine so if i just look at one of those components what it represents is a wave right if if i look look at this as a at a fixed radius it's a wave which goes around on the circle of fixed radius r right so imagine that there is a circle of radius r r is fixed right so this is my circle let's say and on this circle i have a wave like this and what you do is you join the opposite ends of this circle if you have to join them in order to so that it so that it becomes a circle right and if you do this what you will find is that you have this requirement okay what does this requirement imply this requirement tells you that your state should be single valued that means when i go around the circle again na when i go around the circle i should not come back like this the wave function should match up it should meet up with itself so for instance in this in this illustration i have shown that exactly two wavelengths are fitting into your perimeter of the circle right so if i substitute my expression for the state so i have exponent e to the minus i m 
pi plus two pi two pi n, or let me just say two pi for simplicity, two pi is equal to e to exponent minus i m phi, right? And so this tells you that uh, two exponent of minus i uh, my, minus i two pi m should be equal to one, right? Which implies that m has to be an integer, right? So m can be minus minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, something like that. It can be any any positive or negative integer. So m takes on discrete values. So what do we find? We find that the eigenvalue of Lz is quantized, right? This is the eigenvalue, right? This is the this is the z component, and by the eigenvalue we mean well, if you make a measurement of the z component of the angular momentum, this is what we will measure, right? So this is the z component of the angular momentum, and this is quantized in in steps of uh, one, okay. So we have figured out what these m values are. What about the what about the l square? Right. We still have to understand what is the what are the eigen eigen values and eigen states of l square. Right. So since l square and l z commute with each other, that means they should have the same eigen state. Right. So, if psi is an eigenstate of L z, that means it should also be an eigenstate of of L square with some different eigenvalue. Right. K is the corresponding eigenvalue. The question is, what should this eigenvalue be? Now we have taken this to be the state. Right. So this state should continue to be uh, an eigenstate of L square also, right? So what is L square now? What is L square, right? So L square is LX square plus LY square plus LZ square. And uh, again, uh, we are working in, in these polar coordinates. Right. So if you work in polar coordinates, let me uh, again, I forget the exact expression. So I should remind myself what it is.
Okay. So in in polar coordinates, L square takes the following form, and I will share uh, some uh, PDFs and so on with you, so you can uh, look them up. L square becomes minus h bar square one by sine theta d by d theta sine theta d by d theta one by sine square theta d square by d pi square. Okay. Now, how many of you have seen uh, this expression before? Can you raise your hands? Like, if you have seen something like this before, right? Okay. So not not too many people. Okay, you can lower your hand. So where what does this expression? Uh, it it looks similar to something that we you know you you might have encountered before, which is what. Well, you remember that there is something called the Laplacian, right? Del square, right? What is this operator? Dx square plus dy square plus dz square, which I can also write like this: del dot del, right? Now this Laplacian. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, I'm getting a call. So this is this is the Laplacian del square. Okay. Now this is written in Cartesian coordinates, but I can also express the same thing in uh, spherical coordinates. So if I write it in spherical coordinates, it takes the following form: one by r square d by dr, r square d by dr. Okay. And then plus one by r square, all right, times this whole expression. Okay. So this will it fit? Not really. So this is what the Laplacian looks like in spherical coordinates. And if you compare these two expressions, you can see that this part of the Laplacian, right, is exactly the same as the L square operator, right? In fact, it is exactly equal to minus L square by H bar square. so you can write the you can write the laplacian as 1 by r square d by dr r square d by dr plus sorry minus l square by h bar square okay this is a very important expression which we will use uh, later on and so let me Put it in a box. Uh, let me just ask you: Do you have a class at three? No, sir. Okay, so can I take ten more minutes or so? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, unless any of you have to leave for some reason, you can let me know. Okay, so. Now, what are the eigenvalues of this operator, right? I, I still haven't said anything about that. So the eigenvalues of this operator, L square, uh, will turn out to be, uh, the eigenfunctions will turn out to have this form, ylm theta phi, and the eigenvalues will turn out to be of the form L times L plus one, YLM, theta. 
and this y ln theta phi is also an eigen state of lz so if you if you uh, take lz and act on this uh, what you get is uh, uh, you you get m times y ln and with an h bar with a factor of h bar right and so this this radial component the radial component of this state it doesn't really play any role at least when you're talking about the uh, the angular momentum right so the angular momentum is entirely in within this expression and these two functions together they are known as uh, they are combined into into one object which is called a spherical harmonic so y lm theta phi they this can be written as pl theta times e to the i m phi and this is known as a spherical harmonic and these pl these are lagrange polynomials okay so what is the eigen value of l square the eigen value of l square looks like this it looks like l times l plus 1 and what are the possible values of l l has to be a positive integer so it 0 1 2 and so on and once you fix the value of l this fixes the value of m also so m goes from minus l to minus l plus 1 or in steps of 1 to l minus 1 and then l okay so this is uh what do you call it these these are the eigen states of angular momentum now all of this that i have worked out here right this is all uh the functional approach okay so i'll i'll call i'll mention that here and this is the functional approach or you can call it the differential equation approach right because i have written down the differential equation corresponding to this operator and then look found the solutions of this differential equation right and this approach is not not very straight forward it's not very simple right uh so there is uh, there is another way which is the algebraic approach okay and the algebraic approach is very very nice because it is just like the solution for the harmonic oscillator you remember that for the harmonic oscillator we didn't uh, when we first looked at the solution we used this dirac approach uh, in terms of ladder operators right a plus and a minus and or a dagger and and a and we didn't have to solve for any of the eigen state right just that just the operator algebra told us that the eigen values have to be positive uh, non negative integers right so we can do the same thing with this angular momentum algebra okay so how do we do that well we 
define ladder operators again in this case. L plus and L minus. L plus and L minus. And what are L plus and L minus? They are I L X uh, plus minus I L Y. Now, if you remember the ladder operators in the harmonic oscillator, what form did they take? Uh, they look like this, right? A is equal to uh, X minus I Y and A dagger is equal to X plus I Y. That right? No, sorry, not Y, P, P, P minus two, P. Right? We can go back and, and, and just check really quickly to make sure that I'm not saying something that is not correct. Right? So these, these were the ladder operators, right? Green is slow to update. Right? Remember that we had this Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator. And what we did was we defined these operators, right? A and A dagger. Right, so A is some combination of X and P. So it's X plus IP. I'm ignoring the, uh, you know, the multiplicative factors for the time being. And A dagger looks like X minus IP, right? And what you found is that these, this, this uh, A and A dagger, the commutator of A and A dagger is equal to one. Right, and since the commutator is one, what we can do is we can uh, use just this fact that the commutator of A and A dagger is one, and we can use it to determine what should be the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is what? It is this number operator, right? It's A dagger A, and what we find is that the eigenvalues have to be greater than or equal to zero. And then by using the commutation relation between the number operator and A, and A, and by using the relationship between the number operator and A dagger, by using these commutators, what we find is that these guys, A and A dagger, they act like creation and annihilation, right? So if you act on psi n, where psi n is an eigenstate of the number operator with A, it gives you an eigenstate of the number operator with one less eigenvalue, right? So acting on psi of n with A gives you psi of n minus one. Similarly, acting on psi of n with a dagger gives you psi of n plus one, right? So it's a ladder, it's going up and down the ladder, right? So it turns out that here we have exactly the same kind of behavior. So this was in the case of the harmonic oscillator, right? So here, now what we'll do is we'll define these operators. Lx plus L I L Y, and we'll we'll say L call it L plus and L minus. These are our ladder operators. And uh, you might wonder, well, why uh, uh, why this works? Well, it, uh, it it we'll see why it works uh, in a second. Okay. So now. So once again, what we should do is we should look for the commutation relation of L square and L plus minus. Okay, because remember that time we looked at the commutation relation of, of the Hamiltonian, which was a number operator with A and A dagger. Now what is a Hamiltonian? We're talking about a rotating object. 
So the rotating object Hamiltonian is just the angular momentum squared, right? L squared by two i. That's the Hamiltonian. So we look at the commutators of L square with L plus or minus. Okay, and what we will find is that this is equal to plus or minus L plus minus. The updates are being slow again. Okay, and what this tells us is that if psi of L is an eigenstate of L square, with eigenvalue L times L. For the time being, I'll just write eigenvalue L, okay? Then L plus acting on psi L gives me the state with eigenvalue psi L plus one. L minus acting on psi L <coughs> gives me the state with eigenvalue L minus one. So these two guys, they are the creation and annihilation operators for angular momentum. So you can imagine that you start with a, with a particle which has some angular momentum. If you want to make it spin faster, you act on it with L plus. If you want to slow it down, slow the spin down, you act on it with L minus. Okay. And, uh, No, no, no. I'm I'm saying something wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, L square commutes with L plus minus. What am I saying? This is zero. This is zero. Uh, no, no. So this okay. What I should be looking at is not the commutator of L square. It's the commutator of L z with L plus minus. This is equal to plus L. So this is an eigenstate of L z. Then uh, with eigenvalue m minus take minus take minus take m m m okay and in fact if you look at the commutator with l l squared this gives you zero so the total angular momentum is fixed but the z component of the angular momentum can change by one unit plus or minus okay so then in the next class on monday we will continue this discussion okay and uh, we will have our second quiz on wednesday and the second quiz will be uh well it will be on everything okay i can ask you a question from whatever I've thought since the beginning of the semester. Again, my questions are not insanely difficult. Uh, I generally give plenty of tips. So the main thing is that you should know, you should have studied your foundational thing, you know, very well. Uh, and I've repeated that many times in all my classes, um, right? Uh, so what are the axioms of quantum mechanics? What is measurement? Uh, what are Hermitian operators? What are unitary operators? What is a, a inner product? What is a bra state? What is a catch state, right? What is, what is uncertainty and so on and so forth, okay? The rest of it, once you know the basics, you can derive everything from the basics, right? But of course you should also uh, study it, but it will be focused more obviously on the topics I've covered after the midterm. Uh, whatever those topics are, I don't remember. I'll have to go back and see. Okay, I'll stop here now.